Welcome back. It seems that 50 Shades of Grey fans may have gotten what they were asking for. Charlie Hunnam is out as brooding billionaire Christian Grey, and the role is now up for grabs. Who's going to get it? In a statement, Universal Picture says this, though. The filmmakers of 50 Shades of Grey and Charlie Hunnam have agreed to find another male lead, given his busy TV schedule, which is not allowing him to adequately prepare for the role of Christian Grey. But according to The Hollywood Reporter, Hunnam was also so overwhelmed by the media and fan frenzy that followed his casting. Joining me now is entertainment journalist David Kaplan. Uh, David, this is a big story. I know when this came out of who was going to play Christian Grey, people were fuming. They took it personally. They were angry. Uh, do we have any idea of who's in, who may be replacing him? Yeah, you know, one of the names being bandied about that's very popular is the actor Matt Bomer, and he was in the USA Network um, series before. Um, so he's been, you know, he's very popular with fans. A lot of his fans took to Twitter over the summer when, you know, other names were being bandied about as a great person to play the role. Um, Henry Cavill, who played Superman, is also a name being bandied about. And then there's, of course, the wishful thinking names like Ryan Gosling, um, Ryan Patterson. But I have to tell you, uh, Matt Bomer is really um, at the top of many people's list, and that seems to be a name that that's getting traction. However, it always seems to be that the name that's most talked about ends up not being the person who gets that's the role. That's true. Great so point. I'd to, so I'd hate to be sitting here in a few days from now being like, oh, you know that actor <laughs> we never heard of? That's the one that got the well, role. Well, David, we have some casting ideas for you and we want to show you. Ian Summerholder, what about him? You ever thought about him? Matt yeah. Bomer, also, as you mentioned. Alexander Skarsgård, also an option. He's a good one. Also, Chris Pine. And yes. last but not least, I'm thinking this. Our very own Michael Lanos. What do you think? I think that that <laughs> works. I mean, I think there's a common thread there. You know, you look at these actors, and of course Mike, and they have, you know, I think they like, in the case of the actors at least, this sort of steely-eyed appearance. You know, there's a look they're going for. And there were other actors that were named before they were perceived as too old or something, mm -hmm. but I bet we're going to hear over the next couple of days. They can't have this go on forever. Those <laughs> fans are rabid. Well, Mike is steely-eyed, but I think his schedule is too busy. I think there's a <laughs> conflict. I bet he'll release a statement about that. Well, filming was supposed to begin in November, so will this uh, affect the shooting schedule? If they pick a new guy, let's say, tomorrow, will it still come out as planned? Yeah, it still will. I actually checked on that earlier, and you know they're really fast tracking this, finding a person. And you know, right now, even as we're speaking, someone in a, in a Hollywood office right now knows who the next person's going to be. You know, they've obviously narrowed it down. Um, so this won't affect filming. They can react pretty quickly. And even you know, after, you know, in the days preceding the announcement, I'm sure there was already buzz. I'm sure that he was going to be leaving the role, so they were preparing. Everyone has their opinion. We shall see what happens there. David Walking Dead, it's a big one. Season 4 premiered last night. A lot of people talking about it on Twitter. And they're amped up about what thrills the rest of the season has in store this seeing. What have you heard from fans? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people really enjoyed the, the season premiere last night. It advanced the storyline. This is, of course, for people who don't know, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic world. Um, I think this is about three or four months after the last season ended. And, of course, we sort of got a bigger look inside the prison um, where a lot of the characters, you know, inhabit. Habit. Um, but there were still lots of gruesome things and gore. You know, you're dealing with post-apocalyptic, so it's not pretty. Um, but of course, there are always quirks that fans notice. For example, one of the characters um, is using an iPod, which you wouldn't think iPods would be readily available in a post-apocalyptic world, let alone be, um, you know, available to use and working. Um, but I'm hearing this season is going to have lots of uh, more character development. You're going to see a lot mm -hmm. more sort of interesting set design. Um, and it'll be great because I think fans, they want a show that's a you're little right. bit dark this season. You know, we've no more Breaking Bad. Of course, that took place in present times. I know. Times, but you I'm need really depressed dark. about the Breaking Bad. All right, let's go to this. I <laughs> love this story in New York City. You never really know what you're going to get in New York. You got a famous artist just sitting back, selling his art, pricey pieces. What, getting $60? Those lucky people who walked by and saw the images, they got uh, lucky. 32 grand each is what they normally go for, David, right? Yeah, this is great. So this is this artist, Banksy, and he's essentially, I mean, he's not perceived as a mainstream artist, but, you know, everyone's talking about him, so he is. So he, right, he sells pieces upwards of $30,000. He's a huge celebrity following. Um, he's big in the art world. And then he actually popped up on Saturday with a table in Central Park, right across the street here, actually, from CNN Studios, and he was selling pieces for $60. Mm -hmm. However, he was so popular that he took to his blog the next day mm -hmm. saying, you know what, no more table today, guys. Um, you know, it was such a hit. So it lasted 
one day, but it is one of those only New York things. And what's great about it is, is that it makes art accessible to the masses. And that's, of course, the message here by having the art essentially so discounted. I um, love like the going, art. It's, it's fascinating. It's like going to a factory outlet. It's like going to a factory outlet mall and getting, you know, your brand name designer stuff at a lower price. I love this how is still quality. He's just sitting back eating a sandwich only in New York, right? <laughs> exactly. David Kaplan, always good to talk to you. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. You know it's only Monday, right? Well, that doesn't mean you can't think about next week's college football games and the rivalries. They just keep on coming. Next.